Well, welcome to the uh, first, I guess, of the new content, though it will still be a little bit of review from things that hopefully you're familiar with. Um, we might have to break this up into two, but let's see how we go. These are the objectives that we need to know as we start our um, look at basically the fundamentals of chemistry or atomic structure. Um, so you, by the end of this, you need to be able to define the difference between elements, compounds and mixtures. Understand that substances can form as molecules, lattices and giant molecules. Um, be able to give examples of different elemental forms as well as use the terms correctly for different symbol notation and atomic number and mass number. Deduce the correct nuclide symbol notation, a nuclide symbol being our standard atomic symbol notation for any given element. Um, be able to define the terms isotopes and give examples of common isotopes and then explain the physical and chemical properties of isotopes and how they are similar or different to um, their component atoms. So let's get started. One of the main things that we need to look at with this is an understanding of how the atomic model has changed over time. When we talk about the structure of atoms, it is really just a model. Um, we don't have anything that can see anything quite small enough to really be able to visualize atoms in the way that we talk about them. So this model is developed over time um, and where you won't be um, examined on all these different models, who came up with them, it is important for you to have an understanding that this model has changed over time and that um, with that we've seen it go from uh, no nucleus to a nucleus, which is what happened with Rutherford with electrons orbiting it, to the Bohr model, which will be the one that you're most common uh, you've most commonly seen up until this point where we have a dense positive nucleus surrounded by shells of electrons and we're going to actually expand on this over the next few weeks and incorporate some of the quantum mechanics stuff that we've discovered since the 1940s and 50s and even the 30s with Einstein um, and how that's been now built into our idea of the atomic model and mathematically what we understand electrons to be. So really you just need to understand that atomic theory has developed over time with contributions from many different individuals and that now in these regions now with our atomic model it really does overlap with physics a lot and as we discover more we continue to adapt the model. The modern day specifics of what we consider to be the atomic model is essentially that all matter is made up of atoms. The atoms are neutral and uncharged, so the number of protons and electrons is equal in a neutral atom, that they consist of a number of subatomic particles. For chemistry, what we're really looking at is that they consist of electrons, protons and new, uh, neutrons, but they're is a world of different subatomic uh, subatomic particles beyond this that really is a realm of particle physics where there are over different 50 different unstable particles including bosons quarks leptons um, muons all those different kinds of things but we don't tend to look at that in chemistry that goes beyond what we need to really explain the way things behave and the properties of materials which is what we're interested at in looking at um, in particular within this course so we're going to stick to our friendly electrons protons and neutrons we're not going to worry about these guys here if you're studying physics i think you actually do some of these now in the physics course so have a chat to your physics teacher about some of those hopefully you'll remember the difference between um, elephant elements and compounds so an element is any substance that's, that contains only one type of atom okay so it doesn't mean it contains only one atom but one type so oxygen nitrogen copper aluminium sulfur and carbon um, most of which are shown down here are all elements so copper here is copper solid um, it's a pure metal um, and we do actually find copper in its pure metal form um, in the Earth's crust. We also have some aluminium here as well, um, which isn't tend, doesn't tend to be found in pure elemental form in the Earth's crust. It's a bit too reactive, so we tend to find it as an ore, and then we need to process it to get pure aluminium. Carbon and uh, this yellow one here is sulfur, and sulfur actually comes as an S8 molecule in elemental form. 
So it's all um, sulfur element, uh, sulfur atoms, but how they're bonded can be a little bit different. Generally, non-metallic ele uh, elements form stable molecules, okay, but they can form giant covalent lattices as well. And you're familiar with one of those, and that is diamond. Um, it's actually pure carbon. Uh, the same as this black uh, charcoal substance down here. Um, they're made of exactly the same thing. They're just bonded in a different way. Some elements, such as the noble gases, we describe as monoatomic. That is, they form from only one atom. Um, so things like neon, uh, argon, helium, these generally exist as only one atom, so they, we tend to write them on their own because we find them on their own. So this is a little bit of a summary of the ones that we actually should be quite familiar with as we move on from here. So all of our group 17 halogens, they tend to form diatomic molecules, okay? So they're molecules, but they're also elements. So this gives us iodine, bromine, chlorine, and fluorine. These are all our group 17 halogens and they all turn up as diatomic molecules. There's a couple of others that form diatomic molecules, which is nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen, which we will talk about and see a lot of this year. Um, then there's a couple of slightly odd ones, which is sulfur, which forms these really awesome kind of crown structures, uh, S8, and phosphorus, which forms this kind of pyramid structure um, naturally. And these are the different elemental forms of both phosphorus and sulfur. Um, the other ones tend to be metals form lattices, as we talked about in Year 10 Science, um, and our noble gases form monoatomics. So the difference between compounds and elements, however, is that compounds contain different elements that are chemically bonded to each other in a definite proportion. So H2O is a compound, uh, NaCl, so we always know the ratio of which atom goes to what. So sodium chloride, copper sulfate, H2O, and this one here, which is ethanoic acid, they all have a set formula. If I change the subscripts, I change what they are. And because they are combined of different elements, we say that they are compounds. So one way to think about it is that um, most molecules, unless they're elements, are also compounds, but not all compounds are molecules. Okay, so um, things like sodium chloride, because it forms lattice structures, and same with copper sulfate, they're ionic solids, so they don't form molecules, they form these really big continuous arrays rather than molecules. So they're compounds, but they're not molecules. So to be considered a molecule, the substance has to be covalently bonded, okay? Um, so if they're ionic or form a crystalline structure, then we're not going to consider them discrete molecules. So this brings us back to looking at some things that maybe you haven't thought about much since you left Year 7 Science, and that being compounds, mixtures, and elements, and how we define the difference. So elements, we said, where all the atoms are made up of just one element, so all the atoms are the same. So these can be single atoms, such as helium, like we were talking about before, or molecules, so N2 or O2 would fit this diagram here. But mixtures are where we have different substances, okay, um, and they're not chemically bonded together. You can see that the orange ones and the green ones here aren't chemically bonded together. They exist separately, so we could use different methods to actually separate them out without having to break any chemical bonds. In this one here, we can see we've got green and then the diatomic purple ones here. Again, the green and the purple aren't bonded together, so this would be a mixture. Okay, so much like if you think about seawater, seawater has a solution of sodium uh, chloride and water, but it also has some particulate um, sand and things like that, so that would also be a mixture. And then compounds, of course, here we can see that we have two different uh, elements, but they're chemically bonded together and everything else in here is the same. So this would be a homogeneous uh, mixture of this one compound. So it's, it's not 
um, this is all just one compound, whereas these are mixtures of different things. Okay, so I'm going to leave that here for our elements, compounds and mixtures, and then we will look at another one for atomic structure.